A good Christian is bound to relinquish not only goods and children, but life itself for the glory of his Redeemer. Therefore, I am resolved to sacrifice everything in this transitory world for the sake of salvation in the world that will last to eternity. These are the words of John Fox, most famous for his Fox's Book of Martyrs. And it's hard to really grasp just how important this book was in history, particularly the history of Christianity, and even more particularly, the history of the Reformation. Um, in a certain sense, would the Reformation have been as successful without this book? Uh, largely is debatable. In a certain sense, uh, it's said that few historians ever affect history by their work. Usually historians uh, just write about what happened. But John Fox's book was so impactful that the history he wrote about actually impacted the future. Now, John Fox was um, a Roman Catholic. Uh, he was in England and he would have his father done, uh, die at a very young age. Um, he was a brilliant man, though, and a hard worker, and he earns his master degree and a fellowship at Oxford. However, he becomes kind of on the outs uh, and loses his fellowship when he cast his lot with the Protestants, so to speak. So you kind of have the Reformation breaking out, uh, and John Fox uh, sides with the Protestants and in a certain sense, social ostracization, and then later uh, persecution uh, will be sought against him. So his, uh, he loses his fellowship, his family disowns him, uh, and he, was, he has to turn to tutoring to try and make a living. Uh, in this day and age, not everyone is literate. Those who were wealthy would pay private tutors to come and teach their children. Uh, they didn't have public schools, as we think of public schools and whatnot. And if they did, they probably weren't very uh, good. But there was no really school education system until you got to college. But to get to college, you would have to be educated. So uh, you would have to find someone else who was educated uh, to train your children for that endeavor. And this is what he would do. Uh, didn't make great money, but finally, he, uh, his, the family of a politician, of uh, this guy's name was Earl of Surrey. He was a nobleman who had been executed uh, by the king for treason. Uh, his children were orphaned by after that execution, so they hired John Fox to uh, teach and educate his children. Uh, but because of his Protestant sympathies, he has to live in the house and actually be hidden in the house. So he's not able to go out and live openly uh, until later. So uh, a different king comes to power and then he is able to kind of go about and live openly. However, uh, Queen Mary will come back to the throne in which uh, persecutions break out against Protestants and uh, Fox is forced to leave the continent. Um, he goes then as a refugee. He meets John Knox and these other reformers uh, and starts to make a living as a printer. And in 1554, he prints this Latin version uh, uh, on martyrology, kind of a Latin version of the Fox's Book of Martyrs, but it's, uh, it's, it's more of a scholarly thing, right? It's written in Latin, it's called martyrology, the, the, you know, the study of all the martyrs. Um, it was 212 pages long. But then Queen Mary, whom will be coined Bloody Mary because of his work, uh, people started to realize, wow, look at what she's doing. Otherwise, they wouldn't have fully known. Um, but he starts to revamp this work, which was largely on early church martyrs uh, and whatnot. And, and he starts to add in the persecution of the current reformers, the current people who are living. And so this 212-page work will get uh, added to it and made into an 1,800-page work. And then he publishes it in the common language that people can read, not Latin. This isn't just a scholarly work. He wants the people uh, to read it now. And so uh, this kind of 
changes the perspective, if you will, of uh, the people in England. They start to see um, the not only the Catholic Church, uh, but the Inquisition. Remember, the Inquisition was to uh, stamp out uh, heretics and evil, and so, so people might not see it as an, a negative thing. But as John Fox starts to publish what they were really stamping out, trying to stamp out Protestants, trying to stamp out anyone that disagreed with their power and, and either whether religiously or politically, and it starts to paint the Inquisition in a very negative, if not evil, light. And Fox is writing that, look, the reformers have won. They have given their life, and the Reformation is spreading, and it can't be stopped. And at this point, uh, really, it wasn't that sure. Like, who was going to win out? Like, would it be stamped out? Would another Catholic uh, king or queen come to the throne and stamp out Protestantism. But Fox's work makes the people really believe they want it. And uh, some feel that his book is responsible for Queen Elizabeth, who had Protestant sympathies, actually coming to the throne. So this is why his work, uh, as I said, affects history, not just records it. Uh, and so ever since that point, you really have uh, Protestantism uh, in England. So he uh, definitely writes a very polemical style against the Inquisition, against the corruption of the Catholic Church, against uh, showing uh, the, the reformers who had uh, given their life for uh, the faith. And since he kind of records so many dramatic accounts of um, the reformers and even of the early church. Remember, he starts with the early church and just builds up to the current day of all the martyrs that have given their life for the faith. This was very impactful because at this time, people didn't have any other book. The common person had no other book to read besides the Bible. After John Fox, there would be the Pilgrim's Progress, as we talked about John Bunyan, which would become the most uh, widely read book outside of the Bible. So that was a hugely impactful book. But prior to that, John Fox's book was the only other reading material. So everyone who could read, read it. And it became super kind of in the psyche of the common man. Of, wow, look what happened. Look at these uh, reformers who are giving their life for the true faith. And it started to show and paint the Reformation people as very honest and sincere, willing to give their life for the faith. And then you have the Inquisition under the Pope who's trying to stamp out true faith. And so even to this day in some countries, uh, you have a very tense um, kind of political state uh, and psychological and, or, or social state between Protestants and Catholics. And a lot of times people say, why? You know, why they, how come they don't get along so much? And we don't really kind of grasp that maybe here in the U.S. where there has never been religious persecution. But when you, if you live and you have ancestors that were literally tortured and killed uh, for uh, the Protestant leanings, um, you can see how there would be some bitterness, right? Or some, uh, like, wow, we, we, we need to be careful of those people. And so, uh, unfortunately, uh, there hasn't always been the best mode of forgiveness, and, there, and there's still some suspicion towards, uh, from one group to another. But hopefully you can see why. Now, uh, as he uh, continues to, as this work spreads, not the other part I should mention is, not only is it for the literate, because a lot of people couldn't read, but because he illustrates the book, he writes it in the common language and illustrates it, even the illiterate person can look down and see these, as I said, dramatic accounts of people being sawed in two and ripped apart and all these uh, ways in which the Inquisition would kill and torture people. And it was a way for them to just look and know the story and be like, wow, this, this guy, was willing to be boiled alive rather than recant his faith. And it was a powerful testimony to the common man of the power of God, of the power of grace, and exactly uh, seeing that these people really believe what they're saying. And, and, and it kind of brought the common man's heart more towards uh, the Reformation, seeing that these people weren't just in it for the money, uh, but genuinely believed what they were saying. Now, Outside of that, uh, he, Fox would, uh, his patron who was supporting his work uh, dies and he's kind of left a little bit destitute after that financially. Uh, a few Anglican churches offered to hire him, but he had such strong Puritan leanings uh, that he refused to work for uh, the Anglican churches, which are part of 
Protestantism, but it was kind of a state-run church versus the Puritans who wanted a complete separation of kind of this church-shaped structure. They, they felt that the, the church should be, you know, run in a certain way and not have oversight from a king or anyone else. Um, and so he kind of really spends the last part of his life just uh, preaching, going about, helping people, doing good works. Um, and and it, 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 he, he didn't have much. He doesn't live a comfortable, easy life, even though in a certain sense he's kind of a, a superstar for his work. Um, he, he lived rather impoverished, uh, towards the end of his life, but again, he genuinely wanted to live out his faith as he saw it. He didn't want to compromise for money, uh, and uh, his work and life, I think, uh, speak volumes and live on till this day. And for that reason, I think he's part of our top 25 and a person we should know because uh, apart from that work, uh, you know, would, would uh, England have brought in Elizabeth? Would they have stayed Protestant? Would uh, this would everyone have the negative view of the Inquisition that they had? Would the, would the names of these reformers who had lost their life been known outside of that generation? Uh, perhaps not. And the, the volume and time he put into writing this uh, makes it really extra special and why he's part of our top 25. We'll see you guys soon.